Okay. Hello, everybody. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for all the amazing uh, comments on my last video for uh, doing the Van Halen One Sound. Uh, you know, I just wanted to make something simple to show it could be done easily with the Helix, and I think a lot of other people, when they do those, try to get too complex with everything. You know, oh, there's a studio compressor, or there's this or there's that, or, you know, need to have a little more gain or whatever. Um, I mean, I think you can see from the patch, it's simple. It really is simple. Um, doing all that other stuff. I mean, if it sounds good to you, then it's good. But um, I, I think you can do it with the Helix. I think you're trying to get it too complicated. It's just a little crazy. Um, I got a lot of questions, so I'm going to try to answer as many questions as I can in this video. Um, so first of all, my guitar that I was using in that video is just an Ernie Ball, uh, Music Man Axis. I think it's 1998 or 99. It's almost 20 years old now. Um, love that guitar. All stock, the, the pickups on that guitar are amazing. The guitar itself was the first guitar I ever bought where I sat down and I played it and I was like, this is, <laughs> this is the balls. It's, it's amazing. Um, it, it sounded so good just acoustically. Um, I had to have it. So <laughs> I, I got every single penny I had. I think I paid with a check, cash, credit card, and store credit. <laughs> so everything I could to, uh, to get that. And, um, I love it. It's now been, the frets have been leveled and, um, it's, they're a little low. I probably should have just replaced them because I've been playing it for so long, but it's, it's my favorite guitar, but it's not my main guitar. Uh, my main guitar is actually a stealth a Wolfgang Special Stealth Flat Top, one of the old ones from Mexico, I think. Nope, China. Um, but it's a great guitar. I've made a lot of modifications to this one. I made no modifications to the Ernie Ball except for the uh, D-Tuna. So um, I use 9 to 46, which is, I believe, you know, not that it's the reason, but I believe it's what Eddie uses, mainly because using the thick bottoms for the drop D, um, and when you're in E flat, I think those strings tend to be more um, more floppy. You don't want that. Um, I still like it to be as easy on myself as possible. So, like I said, nine to forty six, I drop everything down to E flat. I have the the detunas on everything, so I can uh, detune for for songs. We play everything live. You know, we have we play over sixty songs. Everything's in E flat except for some of the God Smack and other stuff, which is what I use the drop for. I think. Trying to Godsmack and Limp Biscuit. We do a Limp Biscuit tune and we do, we used to do Dr. Feel Good, which I go down a, another half step. So you're in like detuning. Here, like the. And it doesn't sound the same in regular training. It almost sounds happier. So I kind of feel like if you're if uh, if you're playing out, half step down is much better, easier on the vocalist, right? Um, things sound things don't sound different when you turn them down a half step. But if you take a song like um, "You Really Got Me," something that's down a half step, and you move it up a half step, it can sound weird. So I like it down a half step just because that's just the way I like it. And I try to be accurate in pretty much a lot of the stuff I do. So I go through my G10, which every, a lot of people say they have problems. I have no problems with my G10. One thing that I do is I plug it in always before I start playing. I plug it in for 10 seconds, and then I pull it and put it in my guitar because it kind of reconnects with itself. And especially my bass player has a G30, and we've had problems where like, oh, all of a sudden you hear me coming through the bass rig. Um, but if I go back and I take out the, the, uh, you know, the input and I put it back in the charger, things seem to work really well after that. It re reconnects and it's good. And I haven't had any problems with wirelesses and places and things like that and uh, Wi-Fi and all that stuff. Haven't any problems. I always do keep an extra cable lying next to the pedal board in case I need it. So I go straight into the drop and then straight into the helix. And the reason I do that is I used to have the drop in a, um, in a loop and I found all it did was add extra noise. I needed to put another noise gate after it. And that's, I just don't want to do that. So it's fine this way. I don't have any extra noise. The other thing 
is it's powered separately. So you see, I have a, its own power supply. The G10 has its own power supply. Um, and the Mimic has its own power supply. Um, I'm not going to buy a, a pedal power thing to power everything separately. And the G10 being powered with the USB is kind of weird, but um, not a big deal. But I found that when I was powering the Mimic and the Drop and using like a a daisy chain, there was some noise that I didn't like. So everything's on its own separate power. Um, the Mimic is in a loop, and it's at the end. Now, I put it in a loop for a couple reasons. Um, the biggest of all was because the sound from the output was actually kind of overdriving the pedal a little bit. It was You could hear like a little digital clipping, just the tiniest bit. But if it's in a loop, it's actually at an instrument level, and... Um, it doesn't overload that pedal. So that's why I did it that way. Um, it's less cables, a um, lot easier to manage. If I don't want the stereo sound, I can turn it off. So, um, that's kind of how I do all that. I've got the, I like the feel of the expression pedal as a wah-wah. Um, this pedal has way too much back and forth. This one is much shorter and feels like a real wah-wah pedal. If you're trying to get from the heel to the toe fast, you just can't do it with this this other pedal. And uh, same thing with the whammy. I actually use the the expression pedal for the whammy too. Now I use this for certain volume things, and um, I have a special effect that I'll show you that I use it for. But uh, pretty much that's I, I use it when I know that I only use it when I know I'm I'm not going to mind. I'm going to have to go really fast from one side to the other. Um, so this is more my patch that I use for everything. It is a 5150 model in the guitar, whatever the Panama, or I think something they call it. Can't remember. And then I'm using an actual, I think it's a 5150 IR um, from Ownhammer. Um, I've used, I have some of the Celestial ones, Celestian ones, and I, you know, I bought a lot of different ones, and um, Ownhammers are great. I mean, Try some samples, see which ones you like, and you'll figure it out by ear. Um, I do cut a lot of high end. I think I do the Pete Thorne trick. It's 65 hertz, the low cut, and 7.5 kilohertz high cut. So it's a lot. Um, I could probably, I would probably be fine with 10, but for some reason, I just think this works too with the context of the band. One of the reasons, like a lot of people will say, oh, I use different sound for every for every song or different amps or whatever you know, you have to kind of fit in with the band. So I want to make sure that my guitar sounds good with the bass and the drums. If I'm changing it every song or even every five songs, it can be weird for them. They're like, it sounds so, it sounds different, but also it sounds different to you. And you may not be cutting the way you were before. You may not be cutting through. Um, so after, after when I go for the output, I don't have to do this. Um, I used to just go right from the quarter inch right into the board, but I'm going into direct boxes, and I like that I separated them into a wet and a dry side so I know where it is on the board, and that way when I'm feeding my drummer or my bass player uh, guitar sound, they're actually getting the dry, not the wet. The wet has a little bit of a delay, 20 to 30 milliseconds of a delayed sound, and it can, you know, when it's in stereo, it sounds great, but if if they're just hearing that one side... It's not going to sound as good. So I'm really the only one hearing the wet on stage. I've got a wet and a dry in front of me, and then I run. I actually double off the dry over to the bass player, and then I have another uh, monitor output put that I can do just for the drummer because his vocals need to be hotter. He sings and stuff too, so um, I can kick up the, the kick drum in that a little bit so he hears and feels that. Um, so that's kind of how I do it. I can also, this way, I don't have any vo the volume knob does not work. So move that around doesn't do anything. I have the volume knob set for XLR only. So if I do need to run it separately, like for example, um, we had a sound guy a couple weeks ago and um, I ran stereo with this rig out to him. And then I use the XLR outs into my two um, FRFRs. So 
um, that worked for me and I can control the volume with the pedal board this way, which that makes everything so much easier. Sound guy loves you. One of the best things about the, you know, having, having this instead of an amp is you have an amp on stage and you want to be louder. You turn yourself up, but you're turning yourself up through the PA and you're going to piss off that sound guy. So you have to have the way to kind of control that. And that's why I like doing it like this. Um, so let's see. I wanted to show you the special effect that I have, which is my spaceship effect. Now I did this kind of, this is the trick with the Echoplex, the Eddie Van Halen eruption trick at the end, but it's backwards. So this is the Tom Schultz, um, I forget what he calls it, but so I just have, it sounds like nothing now and it's in front of the amp, which is important. So you're increasing the feedback, you're incre you're shortening the delay time, and you're increasing the, um, the 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 mix a little bit too. That's why it sounds like a spaceship. Now if you put this behind the amp. It goes crazy and it will distort everything and it just keeps getting louder and louder and louder. And it's one of those things that it's like everything's blowing up. You put it in front of the amp, it's hitting the front of the amp and the front of the amp's compressing and stopping it from getting that crazy um, level. So just to show you guys, that's my main patch. I have an eruption patch, but uh, you know, a lot of these, it's the same basic sounds, basic clean and basic overdrive or distorted sound but the effects are a little bit different. So like on Rage Against the Machine, I have a tremolo. This is actually for uh, like a snow. And then I have the tap. So I can tap in the tempo with whatever my drummer is playing. It's never gonna be exactly the same. He's trying to hear me and you know, I'm just tr gonna try to match him. And then I have the solo, which I actually have a delay, and the delay is set to that too. So, see, I don't have it on there, I have it on here. So it's. The other great thing about this, being able to switch from a whammy, distortion, and delay to right to the clean zone. Doing that with just an amp and some pedals would be almost impossible. So Pink Floyd, again, really just for effects that I use this because I've got a special clean sound for time. Hear that delay? Much slower. And then when he gets to the guitar solo. So I have this set up. I think you can see I've got snapshots on the bottom and presets on the top. It just I actually used to have all snapshots, and I figured out a way that I could pretty much get away with four snapshots for everything. And it's been working really well. 
And I can go in mode, and then I can go into the stomp mode and change things. So one of the things that I do for this, I have a clean sound that has both chorus and delay. Ooh, out of tune somewhere. Anyway, so um, what I can do though is if I want to do a clean with no chorus and no delay, then I just have to turn them off in in that snapshot. But every time I go back to the snapshot, it will be that. So it won't go back to the chorus and delay. It'll just go back to the to the totally clean. So I can go. Oh, I don't want that. I'm gonna play this other song, right? And then when you go to the, but if I go back to the clean, I get, it's nothing. I can just hit that same preset and go back to that. So I really like that. And then I have a delay. And then I also have delay with this boost. I think I just have an EQ or something in there um, set with a boost. So what else do I have? I've got a special one for Tool. This is my same, same, the 5150 more is like one more gain on the amp. That's it. I still have the option to add a Tube Screamer for these to get a little more uh, juice if I need it. Um, I think the Zach one has a special thing. Oh, the the phaser, which is really his rotor. And then the solo has a special. clean sound is for uh, that song too I've got a chamber reverb on there it's a little bit different for Sabbath I've got a special thing at the end oh this is cool the still on this one but for the, for the very end the Now, the band doesn't follow me, but it's cool to do. Um, the doubling delay for the stuff in Warpig. And I think it's like an analog delay. A little dirtier. There's like a doubled guitar in there, and, and even though I don't need it for that part, it's it's just, it sounds cool to me. Uh, and that's really it. I don't, I mean, I've got some other stuff on here, but that's really all I use are those first two groups, which I like. It's easy to get to everything this way. I can see where I'm at. I If I had a different one for every song, first of all, we change our set list almost every time we play out. Um, sometimes drastically. So, you know, if my singer says, no, we're not going to play that song, I'm going to play something else, I wouldn't be able to go right to it. This patch I use for probably 80 or 90% of the night, um, like I said, has everything in it. And if I need to, a lot of times I can just use the pedal board. For other, the other thing is for other songs, I may move these pedals down to the bottom. It's a little bit easier, for example, if I'm playing... Um, ain't talking about love to have the flanger down here. Um, 
Because if you're just going to hit it for those certain parts, you want it on for just that. And that's why I have those um, kind of set up that way. So hopefully that answers a lot of your questions. I do have one other thing is my mic stand. So um, if you look a little closer... This, this is just um, a railing, and it's got two hex, I think it's number six hex wrench things on the side that tighten it in, and this is my mic stand, so I'll try to show you. Try to make everything as clean as possible on the board. Um, I like to be able to just set it up as fast. I'm, I'm, I set up probably faster than anyone else in the band, um, except for that I have to do the PA too, and that takes forever. So hopefully this answers your questions, but if you have any more, feel free to post them and I will answer. Thank you again for all your support and uh, watching my videos.